and welcome back to the Sweat It Out podcast. Today we have a special guest, someone that has taught both Anthony and myself quite a bit over the years, especially when we were with Equinox starting out our career. Everybody welcome Matt Barron. How are you doing, man? Doing good. How are you How's doing? How doing, brother? Good. Ah, I'm doing good. well. I'm good. So, yeah, thank you for having me. This is great. Yeah, anytime, man. Of course. Thanks I mean, for you coming on. Yeah, you've done you've done quite a bit for both of our careers, especially as we were starting out. You know, so now that Thanks. you've now that you've officially left Equinox, we figured we would uh, hop on and see how everything has been going. I know, you know, it's it's not always easy to leave a company. And you were saying mm-hmm. before we started the recording that you were there for fifteen years. You know, it's pretty difficult to leave, uh, especially a company like Equinox. You know, yeah. uh, they. Uh, how how was it or what was your thought process like when you decided to leave and and you know what have you been working on since you have left yeah i mean it, you're right it definitely was was tough leaving you know it's a company that i, I really benefited a lot from I'm, I'm you know complete you know i'll be eternally grateful for all the opportunities i got from equinox and and you know how it's been able to develop my career and, and really it, it, was, it was an amazing 15 years but yeah it was a, it was also, 15 years is a long time, same, same company, so it was a good time to, uh, to adjust course and, and move on. And uh, so now, yeah, I, for first time over a decade, I'm on my own and doing my own thing and uh, kind of trying to figure things out. So um, since leaving Equinox, uh, one, just been spending a lot of time with the family and just being able to take a little bit of a, a breather. I think a lot of us don't actually take enough time to, to step back and, and relax and just kind of you know, let things kind of settle a little bit before diving in headfirst into the next big thing. Um, but from there, uh, most recently, I've been partnering with uh, Craig Liebenson and, and working at LA Sport and Spine, uh, working with some of the patients and clients there, um, and really working with the team. We've got a good, solid team of people there that are um, you know, clinicians, coaches, that really, you know, it, it's a great opportunity to build a, a nice, well-rounded offering for the people coming to the, the facility. That's truly amazing, man. And um, one thing that stuck out was, you know, you saying it's important to sometimes realize you got to, you know, take some time for yourself and, you know, step back and, you know, spend some time on you for your family, you Mm -hmm. know, with your friends and loved ones. What are some of the biggest learning lessons that you probably learned during that time? Um, Having stepped away from Equinox, being able to have more time for yourself, what are some of the biggest things that you've learned for yourself and maybe have, you know, applied or grown from? I'd say kind of the first thing that comes to mind is patience, you know, you know, on a lot of different fronts. You know, I, I, we were talking earlier, I have uh, two small children, one and three. Normally they would be in daycare. So now they're home a hundred percent of the time, um, which is awesome. You know, you get, I, it, this is a unique opportunity to spend time with my kids and my wife, you know, that I wouldn't otherwise have, you know, if none of this was going on and I was still working for Equinox, it'd be the normal, I'd see them in the morning and I'd see them at night, but that's it. Um, so having that much exposure to my kids, it does teach a, a lot of patience and, you know, trying to navigate, you know, keeping them happy and entertained and educated and, and, and just being with them, you know, you have to have that patience. Um, but personally and, and professionally, it's also taught me to have the patience to just stop. You know, it, I, Equinox is, is a, performance oriented company you, if you're there you're working and you're grinding and you're constantly going and doing that for 15 years in the various roles that I had you know once I, I stepped away and I'm by myself in my house it's like okay well now what now what I do and I have that urge to just I have to be doing something I got to keep pushing got to keep pushing got to keep going which is a good thing you 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 have to hustle and you have to keep keep going and, and build yourself up but it just like training like if you push it to the red line every time in every training session you're going to get burnt out you're going to something bad's going to happen same with life you got to take that time to step back acknowledge the opportunity that you have to just relax and, and ease into it and then that that often also just that bit of patience that allowing yourself to take that 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 breath also offers a bit of mental clarity in terms of what you want to do it gives you that time to actually sit and think and and figure it out versus just blindly going forward. Yeah. There's something about, you know, being able to take that step back and and give yourself the time to, you know, 
calm down from the you know day to day operations that you go mm -hmm. through that really does bring some clarity uh, into your life, gives you some more perspective on things when you can kind of dampen all that background noise. Is there a particular moment that you had, you know, e even within your career at Equinox where you could tell that you had to take that step back or, or what were some signs that you saw for everyone who's listening, who's also, you know, a very busy professional, there's tons, tons of us out there. Uh, what were some signs that you saw where you said, okay, maybe I do need to take a step back and I do need to, you know, give myself a little break in order to be able to perform at the high level that I know I can perform at consistently. I, for me, you know, I think I, this probably will actualize differently for everybody, but for me, I, it came in the form of looking at what I was doing and really thinking, I, I don't know if I want to be doing this anymore. Uh, once the, yeah, one of the things that I've always said throughout my years with Equinox is that, you know, I, I looked at the company on, on kind of on the whole of the balance of good to bad. No company is perfect. There's not a, no matter how good the company is, it's not perfect. And Equinox equally, not, perfect, not a perfect company. But I always looked at it as like, oh, the, the good, great, the always the bad, and I'm enjoying it. And it's not to say that the bad started to creep up, but it just, for me personally, it was starting to get to the point where I don't know if this is what I want to do anymore. You know, you know basically, uh, kind of what my role had started to shift and adjust to. And so that was, once I started getting to that point, which it happened, in the last you know year or two of being there um that was a new thought for me that was like normally i'm head down i'll work i, I enjoy doing my work i I've, I've had a job of some sort since i was you know eight or nine you know just see it constantly pushing um but at that point when i started thinking you know i'm not sure if this is right that was my realization okay i need to take a step back and find out what is right what is going to make me happy because if you're you know as much as we want to you know, say everything outside of work is the most important thing, we, we spend a lot of our life working. You know, it's a huge yeah. amount of time that we, you know, you know, we're always at, you're always either at the office in the facility on the strength floor, do, you're always out there doing something. And so if you don't enjoy that significant portion of your life, it's going to trickle over into every other aspect of your life. You're going to have a shorter temper with your kids. You're going to have, you know, less patience you're going to have. They, all these things are going to pop up to where you're, just, you're not enjoying things. And for me, they just was, I reached that point, like, I need to figure something else out. And so I think everybody else can, if you, I guess what necessity says, taking an honest step back and actually taking a quick pause and thinking to yourself, is this whatever you're doing? Is it, is it what you want to do? And being, being honest, and I, you, know, you know, some you know, I got two small kids, so I, I'm limited in terms of what I, my flex, but I can't just up and like quit and, you know, do nothing. But, you know, it's being concerted, taking that concerted effort of, okay, well, what is it that I want to do? And, and mapping that plan and taking that breath. And, you know, it, you just, you got to be honest and do some, a bit of self-reflection. For sure. Um, and I 100% agree. So what time frame was it that you exactly left the Equinox? Uh, my last day was June 30th of this, of this year. June 30th. Yeah. Would you say just because I know, I know it's had an impact on, on me and, 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 and I would say even in a, in a good way, obviously not hoping anything of the bad stuff happened, but mm -hmm. would you say that COVID was a big decision for you to leave this or was this something that you said was even though a year ago you were thinking about it, but would you say COVID was really like that sped up that process for you? I think COVID was a part of it, but you know, COVID or not, it probably would have ended up in the same. I don't know if the timelines would have been the same or, or what, but I would be in the same situation. Um, COVID just was kind of the catalyst that just got everything continued down that path. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, we understand. Yeah. We say the same thing about even starting this podcast. You know, we, mm -hmm. we were in the same type of situation, go, 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 constantly training people, you know, trying to work on our online stuff. And then finally COVID hit and we were able to take a step back and go, okay, well, what do we do now? Yeah. I don't yeah. think if it was for COVID, I, I don't even know if we'd be at this position. I, no, I, I think, think we so. would have had the podcast, but I don't think at the level we're doing it. And the same thing with my business, you know, I, you know, it's able to help me take a step back. I know for Josh to spend time with a family, with my loved right. ones, but also, at two, also as well, it's helped me really focus my, my energy on the most important things that I've wanted to accomplish or I've wanted to put focus in to get out of some of the stuff I, I didn't want to continue to doing, but I had to because, you know, Hey, you got to pay the bills or Hey, because yeah. you know, you got to make sure money's coming in. 
And, you know, I brought that up because I just, I, I just think at the same time as, you know, there's things that, yeah, you know, suck and, and are bad about COVID. But I think there's also a lot of learning lessons, and a lot of good stuff that have come out of it for a lot of individuals. Um, yeah. And I think part of it is that taking that step back and now really creating awareness for yourself of what do I want to do? You know, where can I put my time and energy into, you know, and also too, am I going to sit around and wait around for something to happen? Or am I going to actually take advantage and, and seize the moment and go after the things that I want to work on? Well, even with people's health, right? Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. Well, there, there's a, a book that I, I listened to on Audible, um, I, and I'm blanking on the author's name, but the, the title of the book, The Obstacle is the Way. You know, it's, you know. Ryan Holiday? Go, yeah, Ryan Holiday. Thank yeah, you. I, love that book. I, it's on the tip of my tongue. I, I know his name. <laughs> yeah, um, that's a great author. But yeah, they, this now is a great example for everybody individually, for our industry as a whole to take a step back and, and yeah, there's a lot that, that sucks right now. There's a lot that you're like, Oh man, this is not ideal. Um, but if you take a step back and you look at, okay, well, what is this, you know, take the emotion out of it. What is the situation? And now because of what's going on, what are the opportunities that exist? What are the new paths or new things that open? And for a lot of the people in the industry, they, they found, um, the avenue of uh, virtual coaching and remote coaching and going online and having that opportunity. Um, you know, one of the things I, I I'm hoping is the case and I, I think will be good for the industry and because our industry is predicated on, you know, getting people healthier, having them take ownership of what they can do and, and, you know, basically living a better, a healthier life. What I'm hoping happens for the average population coming out of this is that they also, because they've been stuck at home, they haven't been able to go to a gym they're going to take more ownership. They're going to, they're going to have spent the last month, you know, five, six months realizing, Hey, I, I can do stuff at home and the barrier to entry for me to be active and exercise and work out and do all these things is much lower than I originally thought it was. And so I think taking that step back and looking at, okay, what is in my way? What's the obstacle? You know, how do I overcome and make, how does this now just prevent for present a different path that I would not have noticed otherwise? Yeah, no, for sure. I mean, even, and I've, I've said this a couple of times on the podcast already, uh, my clients used to be so apprehensive when they were traveling or whatever to mm -hmm. do virtual sessions. And now they love them. They're like, yeah. oh, we're going to be, you know, we're going to go to Europe for a month or we're going to be in North Carolina for a month. Like, we're still going to train. We'll do it over FaceTime. It'll be easy. But like, where has this been? You know, like, yeah. I've been telling you guys for four years now that we could do this. Yeah, sometimes it's just they people just need their hand forced a little bit because that's exactly it. You know, and I've had the same experience. There's been people that they because it's so different. It's kind of a novel experience. There's that just a hesitation. Like, oh no, I don't know if I want to do that. But now that there was no other option and they got to experience it, it, it took away that that ability to, to almost took away the ability to say no. And you're now that you're experiencing, it, you're realizing, oh wait, this is actually pretty solid. This is, this is something that I, I can really benefit from. And so now that, that opens up a whole new avenue for people to where you, you can go down the path of, you know, eventually getting to the idea of like hybrid training where I, I see you once a week and the rest of the time I can coach right. you virtually or you fall. Like there's a lot of now, now the flexibility of what our industry can provide has grown and because people are now more exposed to different things and different opportunities. Amen to that. You know, and I have to say like, it's um it's one of these things where I, I i'm even seeing like i know i'm sure you've seen i know me and Jaffa talked about it where you're seeing these polls that you know companies are taking and you know they're landing between 59 to 61 percent of people have been doing service saying that they probably are not going to go fully back mm -hmm. into gyms um yeah. and they're seeing that and you know i think part part of it is because they've realized like heck i could do this from home i could build my own gym here i could have virtual coaching or pre-recorded sessions you know and it's like you know, at the end of the day, like, you know, what is it, 60 to 90 days to instill a new habit? You know, now they instill a new habit during this time frame in COVID, and now they love this new habit that, yeah, great, they have access to this stuff back, but if they love what they're doing and they're seeing results, then why are they going to break it? Um, you know, so with that being said, what is it that you truly feel um, is going to be the biggest impact once we get out of COVID in the health and fitness industry? And you being such a, a big leader in our industry, what would you like to be seen more incorporated as far as quality and value in the online space for health and fitness professionals? Ooh, that's a, that's a deep question. Let's see here. Uh, 
so yeah i think what's going to come out yeah and I, this is a bit of an echo of what i, I previously said i think what's going to come out of the of this time for our clients and, and which will automatically ultimately benefit us as professionals um is more autonomy in owning their program you know one of the things the, one of the surefire ways to keep a client is to have them get results and we all know the best the clients get the best results are the ones that are doing things on their own that yep. have autonomy and ownership of what their program has and i think this period of time these last five six months has put that requirement front and center for a lot of our clients to basically say you got it you have to now be in the driver's seat it's um uh, dr Levinson likes to use the the phrase guide by the side you know that's where we as coaches should be we should be the one on the side helping guide the client to do what they need to do and they're now taking that ownership because once they have that that ownership and autonomy that opens up a whole new world of well what else can i do you know where where else can i go what else how else can i can i see results and so i think on you know coming out of this that's going to be one of the biggest benefits is, is that you know that breadth of autonomy that a lot of our people will have and the comfort that they'll have in, in doing it and and that'll just continue to grow because now it's saying okay well what else can happen you know they may start getting some equipment that they'll have at home you know if they start coming back to the facility maybe they come back once a week or they, the, the the dynamic and the structure of what how their program is executed and what it looks like is going to change and i think it's going to change for the better because now um you know one of the things that i've, I've started to think about as of late and look at it at the the training industry is it become it's become very um appointment based you know it's event based yeah. mm -hmm. fitness and you know it's great that people are making it to the the gym and i've i've worked in the gym for over 20 years you know i'm never going to not advocate going to the gym i love it there you know i the strength floor is my comfortable place but a lot of people that's not the case and i recognize that in order for people to reach the, the results they want and have that healthy lifestyle and do what they want to do, part of it's going to have to happen at home. And I can see that just, that, that just expanding. Um, so that's, that's the, the industry wide side of it. And then the second part of your question, what I want to see, you know, what I'm looking for, what I would like to see out of the, the professional side, honestly, what this is a, has put a big focus on is our ability to now communicate effectively, coach effectively, and yes. set proper expectations. Mm -hmm. um, because before we could rely on, I'm there with you in person and we have our relationship and I can demonstrate or I can do that. The, the in-person made it a lot easier. Now that, especially when you're in remote coaching or you're providing some, some uh, online information, you have to be a much better communicator and you have to really understand what your client's gonna respond to. Because if you don't, they're not gonna be able, they're not gonna grab it. And so I think, this just shines an even bigger light on uh, less on honestly less on the exercise side of things and more on how are you communicating because that's a, that's part of programming for somebody that's in a remote situation i'm not going to give them the, the most complex exercise in the world because they're on their own so i want them to keep you know keep the basics front and center and making sure they execute flawlessly and, and they understand and that's going to come from a lot of the communication that I can give them. So you bring that up, um, which is, you know, definitely, I, I would say is a hundred percent, you know, must need and, and, and super effective, especially now, now there's a lot of more online coaches, online training. Mm -hmm. Would you necessarily, necessarily say yourself, um, having taught, you know, through EF, EFTI, having put in mm -hmm. these courses together, workshops, education, do you see yourself putting some kind of thing together that now navigates towards helping coaches in this realm? Yeah, they, and that's kind of looking at my long-term plan. That's that's the path I want to continue down. Is, is yeah, you know, I've lived in the worlds of coaching, training clients, and working on education, and, and those are two worlds I, I really love. You know, and, and so I now that I'm away from Equinox and EFTI, I don't want to lose that, that education side of things. So yeah, that's absolutely the case. It's, so it just may take a little longer to put together and having the time to do so, but that's where I want to make sure that. I can still have some some level of impact and, and just try to be of service honestly to trainers in our industry and, and that's ultimately where my desire for around the education side of things comes into play is i just i i want to give back to the industry and, and be of service to the industry that has given so much to me you know i i remember when i first got into it you know i graduated the university in 2002 or 2003 can't remember 100 percent, but 
when those two years, when those years, a while back. <laughs> uh, I was in um, elementary school. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I was in middle school, I, actually. Never mind. I bumped well, myself I, a little bit. <laughs> There you go. See, you, you, you keep yourself a couple of years. Um, well, when I and when I was graduating or getting ready to graduate, and you know, basically saying I'm going to be a personal trainer in all places. Uh, you know, I was in St. Louis, Missouri at that time. So this, you know, not even in Los Angeles, being a personal trainer in St. Louis, Missouri, where really the training industry at that that time in the early 2000s was not really really known for for good things. Um, my parents were trying to talk me out of it, and so. Yeah, to because they just they didn't know that there was a career to be had there. But with everything that I've been able to get out of the fitness industry and building a career and building a life and, and doing everything I've been able to do, it, it, education is an opportunity to give back to that. And I, there's, I think going forward, there's just going to be more and more people that are seeing this truly as what it is, a career and a profession that you can do for the long haul and just you, you build your lifestyle around, you build your life around it. Yeah, I mean... I worked for you for a little while as a master instructor in, in here in Miami, right, for two years. And you really opened my eyes to that, that point exactly, right, is that you can make a career out of this. Like, mm -hmm. after becoming a master instructor, I was able to go to certifications and, and look at them from a much different perspective, right? Instead of being the student, I started to really pay attention to the nuances of the instructor and, mm -hmm. and you know, the way that they were coaching people through things or the way that they flowed the certification or the workshop, you know, the, the cues or the terms that they were using and, yep. and how they were making complex ideas relatable to, you know, not only people like me and, and Anthony who have been in the field for a while, but, you know, the average person who's just a gym enthusiast, you know, yeah. so it really, it really shifted my mindset as to, you know, how powerful communication really is, right? Going back to your previous point as well. Mm -hmm. That's absolutely the case. Yeah, and when you do take that teaching role, you're we every every input we have, every experience we have, we run through the the lens or the the, the filter of our prior experiences. And so once you step into the role of being a teacher, now it's you start every experience you have, you start looking at different elements of it. You're still taking in the information, but now you're taking in more than just the content they're they're providing. As you called out, you're taking in. Well, how are they interacting? Eh, good or bad? Like you, you learn just as much from from a bad teacher as you do a good teacher. Just it's what to do versus what not to do. Yep. Um, and so you you go in and you start kind of picking all of these different pieces of information, and that has ripple effects to everything. To where how you teach others to, and this is something that I've been been really you know, adamant about as of late. To how we work with our clients. We are teachers to our clients. You know, we though we have the, the title of trainer and coach, that to me is synonymous with being a teacher because being a teacher, you're teaching movement, you're teaching better habits, better nutrition, better recovery. It just, it's going to express itself in different ways and different, different means. And to understand how an effective teacher communicates information, uh, fosters learning, fosters an environment where learning. And you went to the, the master instructor certification. That was a big thing of what we yeah. did is, how do we foster a good learning environment to where people can feel safe learning? You know, I, I think that's a big piece of it, you know, particularly with, uh, with working with clients now, whether it be live or remote or, you know, or at any point in time, you not only have to pick the right exercises, you need to put together a program that they can do, but you need to create an environment for them where, they, and I'm going to qualify this after I say it, where they feel safe. And, and when I say that, I don't mean, easy. I don't mean taking, you know, taking light on them or not pushing them, but where they feel like they can be successful. You know, we want to challenge them. We want to push them to the edge of their ability, but ultimately they need to walk out thinking, man, I, I, I was able to do that. I was able to be successful or I was able to get part of it done. And I'm still looking to, to reach that pinnacle. You know, something that, there's a lot of people that, that rely on, let me just beat you down and, and make you feel like you're broken. So I can, you know, you have to rely on me where that doesn't get the best result. And I think you see the best teachers and the people that, that learn the best from teachers have that same experience where the teacher made them feel safe. You know, there, there are some educators that I've gone to that's like, somebody can literally ask, you know, speaking kind of off the cuff, but literally ask one of the, the worst questions I've ever heard. The best teachers will basically, will turn around to them and say, make them feel like that was the most brilliant question possibly. They'll ask, why is the sky, 
green. Like, well, this guy's not green, but that teacher's going to do a great job getting them to, to feel like, oh, that was a great question. But they, here, they switch around. They like Jedi mind trick them into right. the time. They Same thing you really do with your clients. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So there, there's a lot to be learned from that teaching process. No, and this is all, this is all truly amazing. And, and something I wanted to bring up, the fact that you, you know, you guys, we were talking about communication and teaching for you. What is it that you recommend for all these young trainers out here now, especially in the online world? Um, mm -hmm. What would you say are your biggest pieces of, of advice that you would give these young trainers as far as communication goes with their online client? Um, how does that look? Um, mm -hmm. you know, where can they go get good resources on that? You know, maybe they can reach out to you as well, but where, what was, what would be your biggest pieces of advice for these young coaches? One, I would say, get to know who your clients are. You were before, if you were working with them in person, now you switched to online and this, this will be the case online or in person, but even more so now that, that a lot of, a lot of it's being done online, but get to know who your clients are and what their their experiences, their, their background is, because and the reason that's important is so that way you can phrase things in the way that resonates with them. You know, that's one of the, I think one of the biggest challenges we often have is we'll, we'll say things how we understand it or how we personally can, can take it in, but somebody else may speak a different language, you know, not literally, but like a different, uh, just a different frame of reference and experience and what you're saying just isn't resonating with them. Uh, the, the, bringing it to more an industry specific example, you know, if you're working with athletes and some athletes are soccer players and others are basketball players, you can be talking about the same physical attributes that you want to develop, but how you talk to those different athletes is going to change. I'm not going to use soccer terminology to talk to basketball players, even though I'm going to be talking about getting more powerful and, you know, faster breaks and all that. And I'm saying, I'm not going to talk to soccer players like they're basketball players. So I have to understand who my client is, what their background is, what their frames of reference are. And so in frame in organize how I coach and cue relative to that, that experience. Um, the other piece of it is be succinct. Don't, if you can say it in five words, don't say it in 10. You know, there, there is no value in overcomplicating things. There's no value in trying to just fill up space with words. Um, that's one of the things that I've, you know, uniquely been able to take advantage of some of my natural tendencies. I'm an introvert by nature. I don't like to talk. So I'll, I revel in silence. I, I want that person to just talk and I'll listen and I'll pick things that need to be taken, taken away. And I try to give the shortest, sweetest cues, coaching, whatever I need to do to provide the, the change that I want to provide the support that, that that's needed. No, yeah, I, you. I absolutely love that. I'm sorry, my bad. I didn't that's mean to good. cut you off, but I absolutely love that. And um, definitely, I know that's going to bring a lot of value to a lot of the young coaches listening. And I just wanted to, my bad, bro. I just wanted to go on the flip side of things. Now for the person who's the client um, working with the trainer, mm -hmm. what's your biggest piece of advice to those listeners who might have trainers that they're coaching with, or they're thinking about getting a, a trainer, when they start working with them, what's the best way for them to go about communication, communicating with their trainer? Because I think it goes both ways. And, and you know, us being good communicators and also as well, um, when if a client understands, you know, how to be able to communicate back effectively, it's going to make everybody's life easier. And it's going to also make the result easier. So what is your advice for mm -hmm. those, um, pop, those people who are looking to start training and have trainers how would you give them advice as far as communicating with their trainer? The, the number one thing, and this is actually advice I've given to clients of mine, client, when I was managing the facility, clients that would work with the, the coaches in my facility, and anybody that looks to work with the trainer, be upfront and clear on what your expectations are and when your expectations are not being met. Like that, that's, that's number one. I think a lot of times clients... They, because of the personal training relationship is just that it's personal. You build a relationship with the individual and you, you create a connection and there's this, this element of, well, I don't want to hurt their feelings or I don't want to, uh, you know, offend or this or that. No, you're, you're the client. You are the, the, in the driver's seat here. The coach is going to be provide, designing the program. They're going to provide that context and the framework, of what you need to do. But if you're a client, be vocal. Uh, it doesn't, I don't mean like berate your trainer by any means, but, be vocal about 
what it is you want, what your expectations are, and, and especially when they're not being met, and provide feedback. And, and to be honest, if you're working with a trainer and you provide feedback and you're vocal and you give, you're looking for that, that because this is part of creating ownership and autonomy on the, tra- the client side, um, if you're working with a trainer that's not open to that feedback, then you just may need to find yourself a, a different trainer because that, they're not ready to, to have that two-way discussion. So I think for clients, it really is you know, understanding you are still the client. You, know, you are still that, that person that if something's not right or if you want it slightly different or this or that or something, there's, there's always a way to get to your goals. It just requires a discussion and you got to be willing to have that discussion. Love that. Yeah. I, uh, you know, I kind of pride myself on being very direct and, and being very honest with my clients. And for the majority, I would, I would say my clients are the same back to me, but it always surprises me when I find, or I get a new client or something. And, and I know that they have something on the tip of their tongue that they want to tell me. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, do you have something you want to say? Like, are, do you have any critiques? Do you, and they're like, Oh no, no, no. I'm like, you're not going to hurt my feelings. Like I can take yeah. it. I promise. I got some thick skin. Like I'm from upstate New York. I'll figure it out. Like, you know what, what they're like, no, no, no. I'm like, no, really you don't understand. I'm not going to be upset. Like it's okay. If you're critical of me, that's how I'm going to better help you. Mm-hmm. You know? And, and I need you to be honest because I promise you, like, I'm going to be very honest with you about the things that I think you need to improve on and the things I think you're doing well with. Oh, we know Josh is a very honest person. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I'm hard on Mendes sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, you're happy. You're 100% right. You know, it, us as trainers need to help foster that environment where they feel, where the client feels comfortable giving mm-hmm. feedback and chiming in. And, and, and sometimes it's going to take some pulling from them. To, they may not do it the first session. They may not do it the second session, but the third session, you just part of what's going to help build that level of comfort is the consistency of your interaction with them. If you're yeah. consistent with how you are engaging with them, you know, requesting feedback, asking for feedback, giving them they, that, that consistency. And in the, in our master structure certification, we call it creating that certainty. Like we don't want to create any surprises. They don't want to, we don't want them worrying about what's going to happen. You know, if they say this or that, so having that consistency and actually encouraging them and consistently encouraging them to give you feedback is, is huge. And that, again, that comes back to the idea of creating that safe environment for them to feel comfortable to learn and to be able to, to express themselves and provide that feedback. No, I, and I definitely, I think it's, it's so powerful, everything we're talking about, because both on the coach side and on the client side, it's just so much great information to see on both ways and how both can come together to really, at the end of the day, solve that problem for that client. Um, for a lot of these young coaches, you know, who, who are listening again, and I know I bring that up because I, I think it's, it's, really, it's really great to have an individual like yourself who's helped a lot of young coaches. Um, moving into this world and i know there's a little i know there's a little tricky but moving into the world of the online again that we're talking about Mm -hmm. and how this is expanding what is your take on that because i know it's still very important to have experience working with one-on-one i think that's very Mm -hmm. still important um but obviously a lot of the a lot of the coaches are still now entering who are new coaches being thrown straight into the online sure what is your take on when things go back what is your recommendation as far as a coach? Do you still recommend them, hey, get your feet wet at a, at a, at a, at a location or mm-hmm. approach the online right, online right away or maybe try both or, you know, do the, the in-person first, then go online? What is your take, you know, being a, a, an educator that you see would probably be the best route for a young coach to take, especially now with things are shifting? I think for, for the young coach, it's, and then this could honestly go for, for anybody, but First, before you even, I, I basically it's taking that step back and understanding, well, what do you, what is it that you actually want to do? Because a lot of them are getting into the online space right now, but that's a bit about a necessity, you know, and that's the kind of the path that's available to them. But maybe they hate that. Maybe they don't, maybe they thrive on being in that in person. And so it, as much, as much as I see the online and the virtual coaching as a positive, and I think it's something that's going to be really good for our industry, it's you don't have to be locked into one or the other. They, you know, so I, I think the, the first step is once things start to, you know, whenever that may be, that mythical time when things start to normalize uh, and, and you have the opportunity to go back to a facility or, or go back to a, a gym setting, take a step back and say, well, what is it do I want that I want to do? What's the lifestyle that I want to have? What's the, the, the experience I want? With that said, I, if you haven't had a chance to coach people one-on-one and to actually see movement live and see the impact of your words live, 
you need to do that. You, you need to be on the strength foot. I don't, you don't necessarily need to be a hundred percent. You can still have the mix. You know, I think that hybrid environment is going to be really one of the, what shakes out to be the lasting experience for a lot of professionals. Is I agree. They're going to have some live, live clients and they're going to have some online people. So I, and I think that just, it also sets up for a good, you know, working lifestyle too. Yeah. For a lot of business model too. You know, oh, yeah. you're not, you're not exactly. siloed in your finances. Exactly. So I, my recommendation is if you're brand new and you, you haven't put in some time on a strength floor, put in time on a strength floor, get, get in front of a client, see them move because that, that's going to be your clearest example of what, it, what do I know? What don't I know? What am I coaching? Am I communicating, communicating effectively? And you can now also build that needed skill set of reading the other person in their nonverbal language, right. um, which is often difficult, whether via Zoom or FaceTime or them following a program, especially, and you're not even seeing them. You have to you have to be able to read that nonverbal language. What's their facial expression? What's their body posture? What what are they doing when you ask them to do something? Because that's going to be it's going to be very telling. You're going to, you're going to get a lot of learnings out of that. Yeah. It's like, Oh, I'm not tired. It's like, really? Cause uh, you know, your shoulders are slouched. You got bags mm-hmm. under your eyes. You know, you're a little delayed with your response to me. Yeah. Like, you're exhausted. Like, okay, we're going to chill out a little bit. We're going to work on a little more recovery stuff. No, no, I'm good. Like, no, you're not, you know, and this is where I'm going to take over yeah, and just tell put you your, your computer. next to your <laughs> yeah, bed. Yeah. You're going to tuck yourself in bed. I'm yeah. going to tuck myself in bed. We're going to sleep together for an hour. Okay. Yeah. That's I'm going to read you a bedtime yeah. story. I got a bunch of books. I got, I got a bunch of, I got yeah. Dr. Seuss. That's, that's there we go. Let's get at it. No, nah, but I, I really, I agree with you, man. I, I think, you know, and I, I would take it to even a little more extreme, right? I think it is the most important thing that you do before you get into the online realm is have people in front mm-hmm. of you physically because in the long run, you know, you might spend two, three, maybe five years training people in person, but over the long run, if you really want to get into the online realm, like you're going to be able to save yourself a lot of time because you're not going to have to get on these lengthy calls with people or video conferences and be like, okay, well, I watch your squat. You know, you can say, okay, well, what are some of the problems that you're having or what are some of the experiences that you're, mm-hmm. you're, you're going through? Okay, these are some quick fixes that I think without even seeing you, I think might help you because I, mm-hmm. I already understand generalized problems that a majority of people have based on their occupation or their lifestyle Agreed. Yeah. and I can make those fixes without even having to see you. And then maybe you can immediately feel relief instead of having to schedule a call with me on Friday, even though it's Tuesday and you know, mm-hmm. wait for that. And now you're experiencing all this pain or, or you're feeling awkward with whatever you're doing when we can fix it really, really quickly, just based off of the overall experience that I have as a coach. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah, and I, I completely agree with that because you, as you work with those people live, you start building your uh, client personas and your your archetypes of movement and ability and, and you know where you start to commonly see and how you work with people. And, and again, it's that's where you start building your lenses and your filters for when somebody comes in and they say X, Y, and Z. Like, oh, that that aligns. It, it's not always going to fit perfectly, so, right. but you can take that aligns well with this, this type of expectation and just gives you a starting point. It may, that expectation may be blown out of the water and you may go a completely different direction, but at least it gives you a starting point to build from. You know, one of the, my, my former colleagues in New York, Beth, you know, she was always fond of saying is it's, it's easier to edit than it is to create. So once you can, once you have those archetypes and those personas created, editing them is the easy, that's where the efficiency of how you work with people comes into play because now you can start thinking, okay, well, that's not quite right. Let me tweak and adjust. And, and, and that way you can now go, you're just building from that frame of reference and that experience. No, that's truly great. I, I love that you said that. Who, who would you say right now stands out to you as far as people that are taking a huge initiative on that hybrid model of um, mm-hmm. showing up and doing great, you know, in person um, coaching, but as well incorporating that hybrid model into their, one-on-one coaching, who would you say is a good example of that? And what are some of the things that maybe are, have stuck out to you? Uh, and maybe, you know, that, that could be some of, a, of the people that maybe us or other listeners can maybe follow or in their footsteps mm-hmm. or learn from. Who are some of these individuals that stick out to you? Um, I think one organization uh, is OPEX. And so I, I, everything is a little, little kind of seeing people from afar and trying to see what they're doing. So yeah, I've never had a chance to uh, to meet with the OPEX team. I'm just uh, this is my observation from afar, but from what I'm seeing, they they are really trying to own that that hybrid space of 
kind of let me see you in person. Let me get a sense of how you're moving. Okay, here's your your online program, and then let's come back. Let's reassess. Let's reevaluate your movement. Let's yeah, they're I think they do a good job of walking that that balance of how do you actually work with the person both in in person and online. Um, I think you know it's not self serving or biased, but I think what we're doing at, at Los Angeles Sports and Spine because some of us were working with clients in in person, um, some of us are working with them online. Yeah, it's we have this mix of experiences for them. But the big thing that, and I can say personally from our experience on doing it, we have also a big communication side between the providers and what everybody's doing. Um, so I think that's a that's a huge piece. Um, I think besides you know OPEX, um, just trying to think, you know, the in terms of the online space, um, there's a Chief Fitness Boston. They, yeah, they do they, a great job. I love they, their stuff. They do a phenomenal job. They, yeah. and, and you know, speaking of a, a space that that creates a environment where people feel comfortable to train. They, again, I've never met them. I've never had a chance to to go to their facility. Um, my wife's from Boston, so hopefully, once we're able to actually get on a plane and go back to Boston, I'll get a chance to. Um, but just looking at what they post online and their website and all the things they put together, it, it, they 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 do a really really good job of of creating an experience that a, a client's going to look at that and say yes I can see myself there I can train and they're very easily understandable in terms of the, the coaching and cueing and they get they got solid coaches. Yeah, I think that that's you know it's so important and they put out a ton of great content. I know I follow, I've been following them for years now and, yeah. and have learned a ton of stuff from them. And you know you kind of mentioned with LA Sport uh, Sport and Spine that's the the facility that you're mm -hmm. at, right? communication and, and, you know, I'll kind of take it a step further and talk about collaboration, right? And yep. even when you were at Equinox as the, you know, the head of education there, you guys did a, a phenomenal job of bringing other, you know, like-minded and maybe not so like-minded, uh, you know, coaches and presenters in order to be able to come and, and, and speak to the trainers that are there. Mm -hmm. And so they can kind of shine their light on, on things. What do you think in, I kind of want to reference this because of the online market and there is a, a huge majority, I would say, of people that have this scarcity mindset that it's like, you know, if Mendez and I both are, are online coaches, there's, you know, there's only a hundred people that we can pick from. So it's a hundred yeah. people that he can choose from. And if he takes 55, that only leaves 45 for me. And it's really not like that, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, I've personally have used multiple people's programs all at the same time while they're online, you know, John Russins and Sarah Jameson's mm -hmm. and, and a ton of people, right? What do you think it is about collaboration that really actually drives home a lot more success than this scarcity mindset? Well, I think once you, once you go into wholehearted collaboration where you're not worried about, oh, you're not going to take my piece of the pie or so to speak, once you uh, subscribe to that, that full collaboration mindset, then you have a team of people that are both headed, they're both working towards each other's success. So instead of it just being, the, the, the way I can look at it, instead of it just being me focused on my personal success, so it's a one-to-one it's -one experience, me on my own trying to build, if, I have, if I'm collaborating with the team toward the success that, the, that I want to have and that I want everybody to have, and, and just as much as myself as for them, then I have more people pulling for me and seeing things that I may be blind to. And because that's, that's one of the benefits of collaboration, you know, be it in the education side or in training side, is that as much as I like to think that I know, I know I don't know everything. I know there's stuff that I'm just, I'm blind to. But my, my colleague and counterpart may know that and may be able to pull and see what's going on and, and call something out that I'm not aware of and help me fill in my blind spots. And that's something that, you know, from a collaboration standpoint, that's a benefit that you can't do on your own. You know, you need those additional people to be there in your corner saying, hey, this is something that I'm seeing, why don't you try this? Or, hey, or just the pure, let me refer this person to you because I think you'll, you know, you'll gel well with them and they'll respond to your, your level of coaching. There, there's, a, I, there's a whole host of benefits that come from being on that team. And it's just, a big piece of it is making sure you are full on part of the team. You're not, you know, half in, half out, only getting and not, uh, only receiving and not giving. You know, you have to be part of that collaborative process. 
I think that's amazing, you know, that you brought that up uh, because it is key. You know, it is important. On because you're that. getting on me earlier today. Right? <laughs> was. No, and it's one of the things like, look, even with when I work with my clients, you know, one of the biggest things I teach them too when approaching this and they're like, oh, but, you know, the online world or it's saturated or like there's so much competition. There's, there's so much that. opportunity. And I tell them, look, guys, the number one thing you need to understand that if you go out there trying to serve everybody, you're not going to serve anybody. So, you know, if you can hone in and really identify who your ideal person is and you can work on that and serve those people, then you're going to be completely fine because that's all you need. And then when you see other people coming in that aren't meant for you to serve, you can pass those people on to other credible people that are that those people can serve those. And then what's going to happen is when you do that favor for them they might have a friend who might be the perfect fit for you and they bring them back. And then you're also, you're working with the clients like that. And then you're also working with other coaches that they're going to bring you those people as well. That makes sense for you. So, you know, I do hundred percent agree. And I think that that's more of how, you know, coaches need to approach this and view this and, and have that mindset of like, Hey, we can all eat, you know, as long as we help each other and understand, well, this is who I'm serving. This is who I'm serving. This is what I specialize in. And it's okay to pass people on, you know, because we're not here to, you know, do everything. And kind of getting to the idea of the scarcity mindset, like, yeah, this was, it was an interesting insight. Uh, you know, during my time with, with Equinox, I've, I had the, the great opportunity to interact with a lot of, uh, of great professionals in the industry. And one of which was, was uh, John Brardy. You know, he was, just somebody that you, you can't have a bad conversation with him. And he asked some really good questions. And one of the things that he really called out, which when you think about it, like, oh yeah, you're right. That's, that is absolutely the case is that we as fitness professionals, and this is what sometimes feeds the scarcity mindset. We get trapped in our bubble, either by our own means or by technological means like social media, they, they it feeds us stuff that's relevant to what we're interested in. And so all we see are other fitness professionals and other people in the industry. And, and so, and I know I, this has been the case for me. So you start thinking like, oh, everybody's got a trainer or there's, there's so many people in the industry. Which the reality is you're just seeing this real small bubble, but you're just yeah. in the center of it. So you can't see beyond it. But if you were actually to take a step back, the average person, like it, and we can all do this. So if we have a family member or a friend that is not anywhere near the fitness industry, ask them, how much they're interacting with somebody in the fitness world or ask them what their experience is around it. <laughs> yeah. And you'll get a way different response and you'll realize the actual percentage of people working with a fitness professional or engaged in fitness in some way, shape or form is really small. And so there's a large percentage of our, the vast majority of our population that if you just look at the United States, or you can even just look at your own state, yep. the vast majority of the population has no interaction with a fitness professional of any kind. There's a lot of opportunity out there. You just have to be able to, and it goes to what you're calling out, you have to speak to that group, that yep. individual. You have to, don't talk to the basketball player like they're a soccer player. Yep. It's the same thing. Don't talk to the, you know, I got two small kids. Somebody tries to approach my wife with a one-year-old and a three-year-old, like she's a college student with no kids, they're going to miss the market. She's not going to want to work with them. So they, you just have to understand who your demographic is and who you're talking to. Super true, man. And I love that you brought that up about, you know, if you're all seeing as coaches and trainers and you're a trainer, then you're going to feel this way. If uh, the client, where the client is, they're probably not seeing a lot of that. I've been stuck there. You know? So I've I tell people there. all the time, it, it's crazy because the same thing, I tell people, look at it this way. When you go on Google, you go on Amazon and you buy stuff or you mm -hmm. search stuff on keywords it's so smart and knows what you like. So what is it going to do? It's going to feed you more advertisements of what? Of what you searched, what you bought. So if you're searching sports gear, sportswear, this, that, it's going to give you more advertisement, all that. So you're like, oh man, everything on here is sportswear. Everything I look at sportswear is this. And no, it's because it's feeding you that. So I yeah. see the same thing goes on Instagram, on social media. The Explorer, the page is so smart that if you, all you do is interact and follow with follow personal trainers and coaches uh -huh. and all you do is interact with them and you don't interact with anybody else. That's what Instagram is going to give you. It's going to give you more coaches. Is that why I've been getting so many trainers. Beanie Baby ads? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> so when you work on interacting with more of your ideal client and searching and in interacting with them on social media, what is your social media going to do for you? It's going to give you more of your ideal client and yeah, it's going to exactly. pop more of those people out just the way you would find stuff on Amazon or on Google or searching them. Yeah. 
Yeah, a, a lot of it, and it comes back to what we started off talking about, take a step back and just look at the world you created for yourself. And again, you know, especially in the, the online training space, did you create a world where all you know is the other online trainers and you think everybody in the world is an online trainer? Then you, it, it's all going to look that way to you. Take that step back and realize there's a wide world outside of that, of that outside of that experience. Yeah, yeah, I completely agree. I think, you know, we do cultivate the future that we want, right? Mm -hmm. Whether we know, whether, whether it's intentional or not, yeah. right? You, you always head down a path that you, you're making your decisions lead you towards. Exactly. You, know, yeah, so, you are in, you're the captain of your ship, whether right. you decide to fall asleep at the wheel and let the ship go its own course, or you're intentionally steering it in a particular direction. You're still the one in charge and you're still guiding. You're still letting the ship do what it do, do, do what it does. Right. How, what would you say to, you know, cause I, I personally, you know, and even recently have, have had some, some struggles with that, right. Is, is getting people to understand what you were even talking about earlier, right. Is that they have authority over their life. They make the decisions that they want. Other people, whether they want to believe or not really aren't affecting the things that they're doing through the day. They're not putting food in their mouth. They're not, you know, ordering mm -hmm. food on Uber eats or they're not deciding not to go to the gym. How do you relay the importance of taking ownership of over your life, you know, when you're talking to your own clients or you're talking to coaches, how, how they can relay that information of, of the importance of, of taking ownership. Well, I think part of it is having them kind of have a clearly defined what, what do they want their life to look like? What do they want to, what do they want to do? Um, and then from there, you know, it's honestly finding the, I, I'm a big believer in what's the lowest, lowest bar for them to jump over to mm -hmm. get success and build from there. And honestly, I, I, I think, you know, in, in thinking about that question, the reality is, is the, the building importance and that, that need for changing their life. Sometimes that actually doesn't come up front. Sometimes you just got to, you have to get a little bit of change happening to start with. And then you can start really kind of building in that kind of the values and priorities and identity side of, of what they're doing. But a big piece of it is just, it's talking to them and trying to pick into what they want to do. And we, it's often talked about with like the setting goals and whatnot, um, getting to their deeper why, you know, why do you want to lose weight? Why do you want to do, like figuring out the, the, the important thing about it for them. And then on our side as a professional, it's, figuring out like how do we get them there and what's the easiest starting point and really, you know, helping them understand. Cause oftentimes people think in order to get to whatever they want to achieve or, or want to do, um, have this mindset. And I was just actually just talking to my wife about this, um, this all or nothing mindset. I either I change everything in my world or I don't either. I upheave all my, my daily activities or it stays the same. And that's the only path to, to change or reaching my goal. And I think a big piece is once you dig to that deeper why and you align what that goal is and you find out what their values and priorities, it's getting them to realize, okay, now let's start with these small things. Let's aggregate gains over time. And that leads to the big change versus I'm going to change this, 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 and this all right at once, which rarely ever results in good things. Yeah. I think we can all agree and everyone listening can agree, you know, I, I, and COVID has really exposed this, like, you know, you have to take ownership o over your actions or, you know, you're mm -hmm. going to put yourself at risk for, for these random occurrences of, of hardship, you know, and uh, I think we, I mean, we're almost at an hour now, Matt, I, I, I want to thank you personally, you know, you've definitely done a lot for my career, whether or not you, you realize it. Um, Same. Thank yeah, you for coming on the podcast. You know, we're, we're super excited for the things that you have going on in the future. Uh, if there's anything that we can do ever, you know, you're launching anything or you got some, some new connection or, or whatever it is, you know, please let us know. We, we'll be more than happy to help you out and, and thank you. you know, share your message and stuff. Where can people find you? You know, what's your Instagram handle, website, anything you got for them? Sure. Um, yeah, well, and before that, just thank you for, for having me on and, and, and giving me the opportunity to have a great conversation. Anytime. Today. And I, I, I really appreciate all the work you guys are doing and, and all the work you guys did when you were with Equinox. And you know, it, it just, yeah, I'm, I'm very appreciative. Thank you. Um, yeah, if somebody wants to, to find me and, you know, 
I, I'm open to anybody reaching out. So my Instagram handle is uh, at Matthew.Barents. It's pretty simple. The same with Facebook. I try to keep it, try to keep it pretty simple. So just at Matthew.Barents. Um, they can also reach out to me um, if they want to shoot me an email. They can just send me an email at Matthew.Barents at gmail.com. Um, and the final thing, and I just finished putting together, I guess last things, I just finished putting together, um, slow on the uptake on, on creating a website, but I created a, a website where I'm going to try to post content and start building stuff over time. Um, awesome. It's called, um, it's called we, we thrive fit.com. So um, they can find me there or go to LA Sport and Spine. You can find me there. Apparently there's a lot of places I guess you can find me. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. You're definitely a reference for people. So. Love it. But yeah, anybody has any questions, I'm happy to help or I'll, I'll do whatever right. I can. Amazing. Support. Same and same to you guys. If there's anything I can really do to help, yeah, I really appreciate it. Support, just let me know. Yeah. Amazing. No, really, really. Thank you. Um, I got a few rapid fire questions for you. So Please. we're going to do these quick. Gotcha. Okay. All right. Number one, if you had to pick one tool to keep forever and you couldn't use anything else, what would you pick? One fitness no, it's tool. No, just a tool. Okay. Fitness tool. Kettlebell. It's just my favorite thing to play with. I see you using the mace more. Yes, I, I, I love mace. I, I, I love heavy steel objects tend to be pretty fun to play with. Um, yeah. but if I had to, I, I was put on the spot. If I had to pick one, I'll go with a 24 kilo kettlebell. Ooh. I'm good with that. All right. So for all these coaches out there, like you being such a great community communicator and, and someone who, who understands communication um, in our field, when is it smart to use it and not to use it with your significant other? <laughs> oh. do not use it after going to a course or reading a book that they're aware of because I, they will see that right away and they'll call you out and like you just went to a course you can't use that, that uh, so, what is it a happy use. happy wife happy life 100 percent, 100 percent. as a divorce man i can tell you that yeah if you go to a course and or read a book and they know it don't use it then Give yeah. some space and time for them to forget that, that yeah. or <laughs> whatever good. it is that you're trying on them. That's, I wish I would have known that in the time. <laughs> yep, that's, that's, that, you, you, go, you coaches heard it out there. Um, next one. What's the wildest, craziest experience you've ever experienced um, in your field? Just, I guess would say at Equinox, just seeing the wildest, craziest thing or experience the wildest, craziest thing. <laughs> I guess the wildest, craziest thing that I experienced was getting into a fight with a, with somebody in the, in the gym yes okay. yes shoot i did not see that one coming. not me either yeah. you're blindsiding me with that okay. one yeah that, that one nobody expects you, well, you, you didn't have that 24 kilo no no hand, right none. oh okay okay so yeah I'll, I'll can clarify. you throw hands can you throw hands i well i i've been known to throw, throw down one, I, I grew up as a wrestler and a boxer and i'm the youngest of four boys so okay so yeah you know how to defend yourself yeah. Um, but basically what happened, you know, it was when I was, uh, working at the center city club and I was the manager there and I was there one morning working out, just getting uh, a lift in before I started, started work for the day. And we have a strict, no outside trainers policy. So they, I, and you can spot an outside trainer. Oh yeah. One. From a mile away. Yeah. From a mile so, away. I, I'm not, a, I, I, I like to think at least I'm not a mean guy. I, I, no, I, not at all. I, so I try to be nice. So I go up to the guy and say, Hey, you know, I introduce myself. Hi, my name is Matt Barron's. I'm the manager here. I just want to let you know that we don't have allow outside trainers here. It's an insurance thing. Like you, you guys are both welcome to work out, keep working out. You just, you're not allowed to train. Uh, and that initial interaction led to him. I mean, honestly, he pulled out like the, the most like grade school type of taunts, like he, chicken legs and something like, <laughs> that's, he, that's cool. and he literally he basically looks like oh let's step outside and sell this like man and i'd also been a in my previous life so i was also a bouncer for five years okay so I, really okay. wow we're I pulling back the layers I here I got, I got a little background <laughs> um so i know how to get somebody outside of the building so basically to me it's like okay cool you want to step outside i'm going to walk you outside and then i'm going to close the door we're not, I'm not going to fight you outside the, my, my facility. I'm just going to close the door. I'm like, you're outside now. Now go away. Um, so, but I also know, being a former bouncer, that you don't walk directly behind the person. You 
have at least five feet of space in between you and them because we made it down, the, made it to the hallway and we're walking down and I'm just trailing behind him. And he turns around and he throws a punch at me and I just duck it, throw my shoulder into his chest and ram him into the, to the wall, drop him to the floor, got my knee on his chest. And you know, I'm just like, Hey man, let's, we don't need to be doing this. Let's stop. Wow. The, the funny Damn. part was I met my wife used to work there. She was the front desk manager. And so because it was so early, there were no member advisors there to tour potential new members. And so just as I dropped him to the floor and I'm kneeling on his chest, my wife's walking down the hall with a potential new member and just turns and looks at me and says, and that's Matt, our fitness manager. And, <laughs> yes. and, and my future husband. Yes, that's yeah. great. <laughs> Uh, that's but yes, yeah, so that that's what happened. Yeah, I awesome. I don't like that that happened, but yeah. I think that, I think this is the best crazy story that we've heard no, so I, far. This is by far the. I, oh, I love this. This is awesome. Man. I love this. Yo, that was awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you for and sharing. And I love how still you were on him with the knee, and you're still so civil. Yeah, <laughs> you're just like, like listen, man. <laughs> I didn't want to be like, look, he didn't make contact, and, and I let him up, and he even we got it. Was, I was like, all right, you know, let him up. I'm trying to get him outside. And he keeps walking and again, he turns around and throws a punch at me. And this time I know he knows he's not going to hit me. So I'm like, man, you're just wasting. No, you're just looking for the, you're just looking for the, looking, trying to look, look tough. I'm like, let's just keep going. Are you done? Let's yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Oh, you want to go back on the ground? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Love it, man. Yeah. Oh, that's um, awesome. Last question to, to wrap this up and on a, on a, on a really great note with a lot of advice. What's the biggest piece of advice you can leave off to all our listeners today? Doesn't matter if it's a coach, client, just for anybody. What's that advice? Hmm. I can take that in a lot of different directions. I would say I come back to, to what I started with, being patient with yourself. And this is independent of COVID or changing careers or anything along those lines. Be patient with your growth as a professional. If you're a new professional starting out, you don't need to know everything right away and you shouldn't know everything right away. Allow yourself time to make mistakes, allow yourself time to learn, grow and develop. Um, if you're a seasoned professional, be patient with yourself as things are changing. It may not be what it was when you first started. And now you need to take some time to learn new strategies and techniques. Whatever, whatever the case, patience goes a long way because if you're patient with yourself, that'll, give you, that'll allow you to take a breath, step back and think before you take action. And that often saves you some heartache. You know, I, 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 I subscribe to the measure twice, cut once type yep. of philosophy. Mm -hmm. Patience is a big piece of that. Just don't rush it. Give yourself some time to think it through and, and allow mistakes to happen because they're going to happen. Like if you think you're going to make no mistakes or you think you're going to know it all from the jump, you, you're setting yourself up for heartache. Allow the mistakes to happen. Learn from those mistakes. Pull information. Get information from them and then grow. And that's, that's, that I think to me, it doesn't matter where you're at in this industry, that's going to be a big help. It's amazing. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. We appreciate it. Thank you again for coming yeah, on. You do. Guys, you heard again, it. Yeah. Thank Patience. You. Yeah. Until next time, everyone.